Hello and welcome to the PMQ Live update for April 10th. I am Brian Hernandez and I'm here today with a good friend, Joel Aurelio. He feels like family. He's up in Chicago. He's the owner of uh, Aurelio's Pizza um, and franchisor. Uh, Aurelio's has been around for 60 years and got upwards of, I believe, like 40 locations all over the country. So, Joe, why don't you go ahead and uh, say hello to everybody and, um, you know, just kind of give us the briefest history of Aurelio's because I know it's, it's a long history, but uh, we want to touch on that and then what you guys are doing right now. So take it away, Joe. All right. Well, thank you, Brian. And welcome, everybody, to come to the show here today. Um, Aurelio's Pizza was founded by my father back in 1959. He was 26 years old. He came to Homewood, Illinois, which is 30 miles south of downtown Chicago, and opened up a little store that had four tables, one oven, and himself, and uh, started his own pizza place. He had $2,500, and uh, that's where it all started. Um, over the years, he grew um, from seating of four tables to seat about 150 people. 30 years later, in 1977, um, we bought a 13,000-square-foot warehouse in Homewood, and today we have the world's largest pizzeria with seating of 650 people and 13,000 square feet. So from really simple, small beginnings, we've really grown. And uh, we now have 40 franchise locations in six states also. So it's okay. really is in a nutshell. Really is in a nutshell. Wow. It's, I mean, yep. it's, uh, I've been uh, fortunate enough to go to the one that a lot of my family went to, the one in Homewood, which is technically the second location, right? Um, well, it's. The original first location, location we just, second we building on the street, yes. Right, and I tell you what, guys, that is a um, phenomenal building. I'm, I'm gonna just try to show you here real quick. Um, when you walk in, and you can get lost. I don't know how I can't remember how many times you're like, No, go right, go right. But um, this is just the rotunda, and it's all the way around, seating all the way around as well. So, yeah, hey, Brian, uh, it's the, definitely the building's actually the building almost 100 years old, the structure. And when we bought the building, uh, it was pretty much just a cement floor and a, and a ceiling. So my dad was an architect and my sister and uh, some other people, they, they created uh, this beautiful place that's got three levels of seating. And um, it's all wood and stained glass and really warm and it's, it's kind of timeless. And we keep it up so it always looks nice and nice and clean. And we have five generations of customers now that keep coming back and it's just their memory. And, uh, so we're so proud to have a family business that's lasted for over 60 years now with so many memories. Well, yeah, and I could get in all day about um, some of the interesting stories. And, I mean, you could walk around for a year and see a bunch of stuff there. I highly suggest just check it out. Not only is it a great location, but uh, they also have great food, as well as all the other Aurelius locations. So um, I just wanted to ask you, um, being a, a large, a larger franchise, you're one of the, I think, I don't know that we'd be spoken with anybody with a franchise right now. So I wanted to kind of see how this kind of hit home to you. What was the first adaptation you made and kind of the progression of where you're at now? Now, we'll go into depth about a lot of these things later, but just like the briefest of bullet points to kind of get us up to what you're doing right now. Oh, well, right now with the pandemic and everybody shelter in place, uh, you know, here we have a, a seating for a rest in our restaurant for 600 people and you get a you watch the news and the governor says all restaurants and bars are closing. It was quite a shock and really felt helpless for a moment thinking, you know, well, how in the heck are we going to survive? And, uh, you know, after I thought about it for a while and, you know, said, I don't know if we're going to make it, you know, a virus is going to put us out of business. I really can't, I can't believe it. So I, I kind of slept on it. Actually, I didn't sleep on it. couldn't sleep and <laughs> just said, you know what, we're going to fight. We're going to find a way to get through this. And I knew the first thing we had to do was win the trust of the customer that, being a, a 60 year old business that they already know that we're committed, that we have good food and good service. And the most important thing now is gonna be that we have a safe, clean environment for them so they do not get sick if they try to use our facility to carry out or have the food delivered. So we, we listened to whatever the, uh, the government was telling us on cleaning and solutions and masks and glasses. And I searched for weeks to try to find the masks. I ended up going on eBay and buying some masks on there at a crazy high price, but I have them for my employees now and the delivery men. And um, like I said, we're doing everything possible to, to be safe with our customers. As our employees walk in the back every day, they're asked if they're feeling well, if anyone in their family is feeling okay or not okay, if they've been in contact with everybody. So we're doing our part to give the safest environment for our customers and also you for our employees too. 
Well, you mentioned that sometimes you're taking their temperatures, even if just kind of if they're not sure. You're like, well, right, maybe. Right. We bought digital thermometers, and if someone says, you know, I'm not sure, we just pull it out, zap their forehead, and we know right away if they're okay. Thank God we have not had anybody with a fever or been sick yet in our restaurant, knock on wood. And, um, but we're doing our best to keep it a safe environment for everybody. And it's throughout well, our does, um, do the, the, the regular pizza or uh, thermometer guns work, like uh, <laughs> the kitchen thermometer you know, guns work? Yeah. I would think they would, but I just went to uh, the good old local Walgreens and, and bought one off the shelf to make sure it was the right one for the situation so they wouldn't have a false reading. That's good. That's uh, No, that's definitely good. I do want to let everybody know, oh, my gosh, I was going to say, uh, ask your comment or your questions in the comment section, but we've been talking for a minute and they're already 18. So I have a feeling it's going to be a hard time kind of keeping up. I just wanted to uh, address some people. I know you were um, uh, Robert Joseph. uh I swear to God, uh, that might be one of my families, but uh, I know tons of Bobby Josephs. But uh, I used to, he used to go to the one in Joliet was family for years and other friends. They still have relatives that go there and 60 years strong. Um, Keith Chu, he put this question in last night. He was ready to go. Um, he wants to know is the one in Fort Myers closing. And I want to know, too, because, um, you know, my mom and dad lived down there and we were really looking forward to uh, going there when we can get back together. But... I mean, yeah. this kind of goes along with, do you, do you know a lot of what's happening for each individual franchise? Are, are you keeping oh, up on that? Or is oh, it absolutely. It's my, my business to know what's going on. Uh, the Fort Myers location was open for 12 years in the uh, Gulf Coast uh, Town Center. Uh, I had a beautiful spot there. Uh, the two owners were Chicagoans that lived half up in Chicago and half down in Florida, uh, snowbirds. And they grew up eating Aurelio's Pizza, and they just wanted to have it down in their area so that you know they could have the food they loved. Um, so after 12 years, um, this last year, they were, they were talking about selling. Um, so I've reached out to people inquiring about, you know, getting into Rilio. So we've offered it to them. So people were looking at it, but um, might not fit what people are looking for. And then when the virus and pandemic hit here, uh, you know, and everybody had to shut down their restaurants and try to work carry on delivery, being that they were absentee owners, they were, you know, a little older um, just kind of ran out of gas and said, Joe, you know, as much as we love Aurelio's, we just, we don't have the stomach to just get through this and, and, you know, and fight through it. So unfortunately we did have to close that location. Um, possibly it is still available to get in and take it over again. Uh, cause I know all the equipment tables and chairs are still there, um, okay. but they had to do what they had to do. And, um, it is tough times as I understand that, but you, you always hate to see your name, you know, close up like that. It's really sad. Well, and I mean, like you said, the decision was kind of made for them at that point. Um, otherwise, it would probably would have changed hands. So, Keith, if you're looking around a pizzeria, a good quality pizzeria. Yep. You know, give 17, call. Miles, 17 miles south, uh, we have the Aurelios in Naples. Okay. Uh, so, there's still trail. availability. Oh, absolutely. It's just okay. a few minutes drive down the road. Um, yeah, I'm just going to briefly touch. They want you to open one in Arizona. Best pizza. Janet loves the Super 6. Uh, I did get a chance to go up and interview Joe, and we did a video making the Super 6. My uh, editing software doesn't work as well from home, but I'm going to try to get that one up as soon as possible. Just have, uh, Joe walks us right through it. So um, do this last question real quick, and we'll get on with it, and then we'll um, see some of the other stuff. But Chris, uh, let me see here. Chris Elanius, uh, he wants to know if you guys are shipping frozen pizzas. Hey, Chris. Hey, thanks for the great question. We do ship pizzas every day. In fact, since uh, this pandemic started and everybody sheltered in place, we have re uh, broken records on shippings. We ship, you know, 15, 20, 30 packages a day around the country from coast to coast. So all you'd have to do is call the Aurelio's Pizza location directly. Um, you can't do it online. 708-798-8050. Um, Tell them you want to ship pizzas. And uh, within three days, uh, we make them fresh. Flash frozen, shipped by FedEx overnight, and you'll have them on your doorstep, and you can enjoy some cool. Aurelio's pizza. All right. What was that number again, real quick? It's 708-798-8050. Thank you, All Chris. Right, cool. And we'll put that one up there again, too, shortly um, to let everybody know. Uh, but I did want to kind of jump back into this, and I'll get to everybody here. Uh, thank you so much for your participation right off the bat. Um, you got a very loyal customer base there, so um, that's that's something that's great. So um, you said one of the first things you did institute was free delivery. Um, is that something that you find a lot of people are doing, or maybe they're not yeah. doing it because they want to no, keep think, the delivery charge for the driver? Or yeah, I think almost every restaurant right now is probably doing free delivery. Even the uh, third party delivers like a Grubhub type things. They're actually waiving fees 
um, because they do know that this is survival time and we need to get the food to the customers at the best price that we can and um, help them to save money because a lot of them are out of work also. So um, I, I personally went to my delivery gentleman before I even started it and said, do you guys mind if we waive the fees? They said, absolutely. We know it's a tough time out there and we're just happy to get the orders and uh, hopefully the tips will make up for the loss of not getting a delivery fee. So, so it was really nice of our, our delivery drivers to actually give that up. Wow. Okay. Well, um, I wanted to, I'm kind of going out of order here because you just, just so much I want to talk about and I will keep putting your comments up. And if there's a great question, I'll make sure he answers it. Also, they want you to open in Houston. Um, but you were saying that your drivers gave up the delivery fees. Um, you had a staff of what was it like 150 and you had to let some people go. Cause it's a very large inside. You're one in Homewood is very large inside dining. Right. What kind of uh, benefits were you giving some of these people? Did you tell fire them so they could go on an employment or did you work it well, out? No, so, we didn't fire I mean, anybody. Obviously they would have the job back, but. Right. I mean, as soon as the governor shut us down, you know, I had uh, 80 people staring at me, you know, uh, waitresses, hostesses, busboys, dishwashers, saying, what are we going to do? And it's like, I don't know. There's no manual for pandemics and restaurants are being closed down. So um, we just recommended that they would file for an employment, knowing that they can collect money, hopefully uh, going through that avenue. Um, and we also let them know their jobs were there for when this all cleared up and we'd love them to come back. And uh, my sister actually took her paycheck and I also gave some money and we uh, cashed out our check and we gave everybody an envelope with some money in it to say, hope this holds you over for, you know, a little bit and we appreciate you and uh, we want you to come back. So that's basically what we did. Okay. That's, that's great. So again, a lot of, you know, uh, owners and owners are stepping up to forego their own pay just to keep the, you know, their staff fed, and, you know, just the benefits of them. That's really good yeah, to they, see. Yeah, they keep the business going. You know, they're the ones touching the customer every day and making a great environment and great service and the memories. So they're very important. They're like family. So we had to take care of them. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So um, I did want to say, uh, touch on a couple. You've done actually instituted a couple of programs, um, you know, benefit programs. Uh, one's Act for Kindness and one is Food for Friends. Why don't you elaborate a little bit on, on each of those? Well, sure. The, the food for friends it actually was implemented by the Tito's company, Tito's Vodka. So we have a relationship with Tito's. Um, the owner of Tito's uh, is a very uh, giving person, and he wanted to give back to all the bartenders and, uh, and restaurant people that lost their jobs. So on their own website and through their own social media, they reached out saying, if you've lost your job, that you're, if you're a bartender or uh, in a restaurant, you've lost your job, um, there's five locations around Chicagoland that you can go and get a free meal. So uh, Tito's purchased 100 meals from five different locations, and uh, we were chosen as one of those. And it was really, really appreciated to Tito's to think that, you know, we would do a great job for them and represent them. So I really want to say thank you to Tito's. Um, so over 100 or 100 people showed up on mon last Monday. Um, they had a window of between 5 and 8 p.m. They pre-ordered their food. Their food, was, their food was immediately ready for them, and uh, they just come in and grab their food and go. They were very appreciative. Okay. I mean, it's, it's, it's different from some of the other programs that are out there, but people are instituting a lot of these. But you also had Active Kindness, which I really sure. I really liked as well. That was another one I, I thought would be a great idea. I mean, I'm, I'm like you said, my family and I have always given back to our community. Um, but with what our first responders are going through and our medical staff um, – they're warriors out there. I would, I would not want to be in those positions. That's got to be really scary. So um, I came up with the active kindness gift card where you go on to pizza.com, You click on the active card, kindness gift card. You fill out the information they need. You put the amount of money you want to put on the card. It is then emailed to you. Um, so once you get it emailed to you and you now can do your active kindness and pass it on to a friend, a family member, um, someone in the medical field, in the first responders, whether it's police or fire, um, and then one of the local Aurelios uh, then can deliver that food to whoever you gave your uh, gift card to by an email or text. So it's really simple. You can sit on your couch at home, get on your device, and really just make a difference in, in some people's lives. And the, um, the hospital workers that I've encountered personally, you know, a lot of them were in tears. They, you know, they said, you know, it's one minute I got to step back and kind of forget what's going on and just enjoy a hot meal and talk to my colleagues about something else other than what's going on. And uh, 
it's really a, a nice feel thing. And we've only had it in place for about two weeks and we've just exceeded $6,000 in uh, active kindness cards. So the people are being responsive out there. Um, another great thing about it is the person that buys the card feels good for doing the active kindness. The recipients, the first responders, the medical staff get, get a great feeling because someone cares about them and they're doing something for them. And then it really owes benefits because now the um, franchisees across Chicago and Northwest Indiana and the other states um, get a chance to actually sell some food and uh, keep us all alive because we need everybody's business. We're local family run comp uh, company and we need our, our neighborhoods to know that if you want us around, you have to, you know, help us while we're helping you. True. And um, I'm, I'm seeing a pattern here that everybody's just Aurelio's Pizza. It's the best. And if they're not in your their area, they are asking you to open somebody. Um, I guess Vin Guy just said he ordered six to be delivered to uh, Dallas, Texas pizza party Tuesday night. Nice. He's, and he says, throw in an antipasta. Why don't you? Thanks, Joe. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Um, hey, hey, Vin, I'd love to throw in a pasta, but we use dry ice in our shippings, and your salad would be frozen. It wouldn't be very good. So, oh, like, well, there you go. See, that's a good reason. That's a good yep. reason. <laughs> Quality yep. above anything else. Uh, Janet, she says she just got the sauce take home, and um, I swear to God, I think I left mine in Chicago with a friend, so somebody lucked out. But you guys are, you know, you sell the sauce and stuff like that too. I mean, people buy yeah, we, this a lot um, when they come in for carryout, so they can do this stuff at home. Sure, sure. About a year ago, I launched our, our three new sauces. Our, our marinara is our original. We've added a tomato basil and vodka sauce in jars. And right now, um, uh, Walt's grocery stores throughout Chicagoland um, are carrying it. And also um, County Fair in Chicago on Western Avenue, they just started carrying our sauces. And uh, Casey's up in Naperville, uh, a really nice uh, gentleman, a small grocery store. Uh, is also carrying our sauces. And every jar that's sold, um, we are accumulating funds to donate uh, to food banks and, and other great causes uh, to donate. So um, every time we buy something, you know you're helping uh, someone that needs the food out there. So uh, this, um, the act of kindness, you know, I've been personally showing up at the hospitals. I, usually, I don't go in the building to be safe myself. So this was at Christ Hospital, the picture you're seeing here. One of the doctors came out, and then three other doctors also were on the other side of the camera. And uh, they brought the food up, and later they sent some pictures and a thank you. And uh, so we fed about 40 people that day, and they just said, you know, once again, it was a moment to step back and kind of get out of the crazy moment and uh, just enjoy some really good food. Yeah, and you, and you, of course, you're doing pizza kits as well for people um, just to, yeah, uh, yeah. you know. Yeah, well, something to well, take home are sheltering as well. in place you know we're all kind of getting stir crazy and we hear moms and dads you know coming and pick up food going oh my god i just need to get out of the house for a minute so we came up with the uh the uh pizza kit for kids and it's a six inch pizza crust that's pre-cooked then we have a four ounce cup of sauce and a four ounce cup of cheese and a coloring book that we put in there and um so now the the families are buying you know two four ten at a time bringing them back home and uh, making pizzas with the kids, and they're cooking them, and they're having a good time, and uh, they're enjoying some good food. And we only charge three dollars for them, so they're they're really just uh, to give some fun for the kids, and not really to make any money on that one. So, but we're having fun with it, and then they're posting on our Facebook pages. The kids are having fun making the pizzas, and my my thing was, who's going to be the next pizza chef out there for really those, you know, post your pictures. Right. Well, that's I mean that's great because uh, yeah, you got to see the pot for the next generation right there. Right. Um, now, I do, guys, if I don't get your comments up there or, or acknowledge them, we, they will stay up there and make sure that Joe goes through each and every one. But uh, we do appreciate the um, the question or the comments and stuff like that. Ask questions as well if you guys are watching from a pizzeria about what Joe's doing. And I wanted to kind of jump back into some of the things that you're doing that are kind of unique. Um, now, this isn't as unique, but um, you are – everybody saw it was a giant place. You lost a lot of the dining room. You're going as contactless as possible. Uh, but you're still letting people inside the building. But, I mean, how are you being safe in there as far as, like, people touching doorknobs? And what are you yeah, doing I mean, right there? Yeah, the Homewood restaurant and a lot of our franchises were set up with a, a very good um, way to carry out food. Um, because of weather, because of just making it easier, we wanted to keep the people coming in. We have a door person that opens the door. He's wearing a mask and glasses, rubber gloves. He opens and closes the door for the customer. The customer comes in, I put up plexiglass um, over the carryout area so that it separates our, our staff from the customer. So once again, we're not breathing on each other. 
Um, I put hand sanitizers on the walls, touchless ones. Um, we have spacing footprints on the floor, so you're six feet apart. And then the gentleman and the person that guard or not guards the door, but watches the door and helps everybody in and out, um, make sure that we don't have more people in our carry out than we should. So it's really three people at a time. They're properly spaced and we're giving the safest environment that we can. I personally every morning go out with a bucket of hot water and bleach and actually scrub the, the entryway to the carry out, the cement out there, just so it, it's got a fresh, clean smell. Um, knowing that footprints, you know, or your feet can have germs on it too. And then spray the inside of the canopy that you see there. And then with Lysol and then Lysol the entire inside of the carry out entrance and uh, wipe our staff continually wipes down the, the pop coolers, our, our frozen pizza freezer. Uh, we do offer frozen pizzas in our carry outs and many of our locations offer uncooked pizzas or frozen ones. So that's another alternative. So you don't have to bring a cooked pizza home all the time. You can have one in your refrigerator or your freezer for a later date. Um, so that's just another option for our customers. Okay. Well, now, and I know um, I had this before I left and I got to find the file again, but there, there, somebody, I think it was probably the CDC put out a great bit of information about the, the length of stay or the life that the virus has on certain, it's different for airborne, for metals, for plastics, for wood and stuff like that. Um, I highly suggest everybody kind of get that and I don't want to say commit every half life to knowledge, but I'm, or to memory, but it's a good piece of knowledge to know what you're touching or what you have to wipe down. Like you said, you were just wiping things down every day. Doing it every day is not a bad thing at all. Some are no, smaller, you know, less time, but I mean, you know, it doesn't hurt to just be proactive about it. So don't time it down to the second. You know, just get out there. No, and do no. It. In fact, it, it may be more than once a day, actually. I, I'm right. kind of a germ, I'm a germaphobe myself. So at my house, my kitchen looks like a, like a cleaning company. I've got everything to spray and wipe. I keep on wiping off the, the microwave, the refrigerator handle, the stove buttons, um, the sink. You know, you, you don't realize how much stuff you touch in your house every day. And I just keep on wiping and uh, so far so good. And uh, it's all about being safe and being smart. Definitely. Um, I like how you did mention too at one point that you had um, in, your, in your lobby, you have a uniquely long hallway for the pickup area. Or carry out, and but you have like the floor print, the floor plans, blueprints where you have to stand. You've got it taped off for being socially that's, responsible and socially distant. That's correct. Yeah, there's yellow footprints. They're stickers uh, that we put on the floor, and we space everybody out so they're safe and not breathing on each other as much as we can. And we find most of the people coming in to pick up are wearing masks, and uh, they're trying to be safe. Also, everybody's you know scared, but um, as long as you do the right thing, continue washing your hands. Just be conscious that every time you touch something, you possibly could have something on your hand. So um, True. keep some hand, hand sanitizer in your car, in your pocket, and wipe off your steering wheel, your, your button to start your car. And uh, just be conscious that there could be germs anywhere, and uh, everybody is do the best they can, and we'll get through this. You can see in the picture there, Brian, those are uh, baby pictures. We have over 5,000 babies on our walls. Um, the oldest kids now are about 40 years old on the walls. Um, we give a free baby t-shirt out to uh, mothers when they come in with infants and it says life begins at Aurelio's on the t-shirt with our logo and because we give them the free shirt all we do is ask is that at some point is the mail us back your picture and uh, that's how we've gathered over 5,000 now over the years. Some of them work for you now too though don't they? Yeah yeah we've it's funny you know now these people come in they're 40 years old they have their kids and their kids are having kids and they're pointing to their, their pictures on the wall. So it really gives a feeling of family and community and, and generational that we have five generations of customers that have been coming to Aurelio's over the years. And it's, it's their birthday party. It's their anniversary. It's their you know, retirement party. It's really a, the whole, the whole uh, aspect of life from start to finish. And well, um, we're really proud that we're part of so many people's lives like that. Well, you have a large place and you're running out of wall space, honestly. But um, I did want to say, Arden uh it's a big, long post. I'm going to get rid of it off the screen in a second. But he chose Aurelio's over family. I guess his sister, they worked at your competitor's J&B, but uh, he loves his sisters, but he loves Aurelio's pizza. Yeah, yeah. Jane bs was another small place when my dad first started out in Homewood. And um, unfortunately, they closed maybe about 25 years ago, 20 years ago. Um, but they were there for years, and then once again, it was just a small family business, and um, I really don't know what the reason for closing, whether they were just done or or what, you know, yeah. hopefully, hopefully it wasn't us. 
Well, there's there's enough of the market share to share. Uh, and pizza, we like to say there's enough piece of the pie for everybody to get a slice. Absolutely. But um, I did want to ask you something that's very unique to you. Again, I said you're one of the first uh, franchisors that I've spoken to, and you have a relatively large empire. I think I said you can't call it an empire until after 33. I don't know. It's a random number I made up, so you're good. But right. um, you did something where you lowered the, the franchise royalties by a certain percentage to kind of help them out in this. Kind of talk about that a little bit for others who have franchises who might be trying to figure out how to keep them going. No, absolutely. I mean, if, if my franchisees aren't surviving, I'm not surviving. So um, everybody in this circumstance has to give a little bit. And um, so I lowered their franchise royalty by 1%, which could put anywhere from 100 to $400 a month in a franchisee's pocket to either pay bills or pay themselves or their employees or just make a difference. So um, it was something I felt compelled to do. I just think it's the right thing to do and to keep them them going and happy and uh so anyways yeah i just i think it's the right thing to do so if anyone's listening out there you might also want to reach out to your landlords your credit card companies um i reached out to american express for our company card they they waived all late fees if if we did not pay it they said we'll give you 30 days extra and they said if you need 30 more we'll give you another 30 so i found reaching out to people they're actually willing to help you um Another thing I did for the franchise company is I reached out to one of our direct mail companies and kind of uh, had a spirited uh, conversation with them and told them, you know, it's what everybody's doing right now. Everybody's trying to help each other to survive. And so everybody's got to give a little bit so we can all get through this and succeed later on down the road. And uh, we were able to get a, a half price um, for our next two direct mail pieces. So um, I'm hoping my franchisees appreciate that. And uh it allows them to continue advertising and reaching out to the customers that we need to come to our, our facilities or get it delivered to keep us all going here. Do you find that um, people are a little more amenable to that? Credit card companies, lenders, vendors? Um, yeah, I mean, this it, is are, un- there's a little more leniency and flex at this time? Yeah, absolutely. This is unprecedented times. I mean, none of us, I've never seen anything like this. And older people than myself have never been anything th- through like this either. So, um yeah, from your landlords to anybody that's collecting money from you right now is everybody's trying to give a little bit. And uh, like I said, we're all in this together and we're all going to survive together if we help each other. So um, let's all just keep on helping each other and we'll get through it. Hey, yeah, that's that's great. I mean, I was going to touch on that in a minute, but um, so you lowered the franchise costs to kind of pass. I don't want to say pass the savings to your franchisees, but um, make sure, like you said, if you if you don't have them, then you don't have anything. Um, so that's right. That's right. Is there anything else you think that um, you know you're doing uniquely that uh, other franchisers can um, grab onto, or maybe something you're thinking about doing that's coming up? I mean, just as far as on the business side of it. Yeah, I mean, really, Brian. I think the biggest thing right now is to keep the trust of the customers that you're doing everything possible to give them the safest environment for their food, um, bringing it to their house, you know, with with good delivery people that they're handling your food properly, delivering it hot. Um, Pizza, you know, I'm, I might be a little biased, but from everything I've heard and seen, uh, pizza is probably one of your safer foods to order um, because you really don't touch the pizza. Once it's cooked in our ovens at almost 500 degrees, um, it doesn't get touched by a human hand again. It gets cut. They don't touch the pizza. They get slid in a box, and uh, the box gets closed. So next thing you know, it's in your hands. So um, so anyways, I just think uh, if you're out there listening, pizza is a, a great choice for safety and um you really owe pizza chain, and I'm sure other pizza companies are doing the best they can to, to give a safe meal for you and your family. Yeah, absolutely. And I did want to kind of show one other thing, too. And this was kind of leads me to the next question about, you know, balancing normalcy on, on social media, because I think this is the best way we can communicate with anybody right now, because everybody's stuck at home. So all they're doing is watching their phones. Uh, how are you balancing like a normalcy with your social media? Um, versus uh, information. I mean, are you doing 50-50 with information versus and deals versus just trying to post up normal stuff so people feel normal? Because we've, we've all lost that. Yeah, I mean, I you know, this is like a war. Every day is a battle. You try to figure out how you're going to survive the next day. Um, so it's it's not business as usual like it was, you know, a month ago. It's literally every day you're, oh, okay, what can we do today to continue to, you know, earn the trust of our customer and somehow to build sales? And um, by being a, you know, a giving company and, you know, the act of kindness gift card, 
Um, I think people recognize that we're not a, not just takers, but we're givers, and we're trying to do the best we can to help others and and get through this this crazy time. Um, right. Social media, you know, I I got my little studio. This is my studio. I put my iPhone here on a on a tripod, and I push the button myself, and I talk to myself and uh, post on our Facebook page, and it's actually kind of fun. You know, at first I was scared stiff, and I was like, oh god, this is going to be horrible, but. I get my message across. I let everybody know how I feel. Um, and it's just a great way to, f to communicate one-on-one -on -one with our customer base. And um, they know that it's not scripted. It's just, just me talking to you. Yeah. So it, it's honesty. You know, yeah, and what I did get out there to interview you for Chef's Corner, and again, all this happened, so I wasn't able to get that edited and, and written, but I'm, I'm glad that I can talk with you now. And I do remember that it was a very unique spot because those are the facades of like the original ovens. Those aren't working ovens. They're just hung on the wall more or less, right? Yeah, that's correct. These are a couple of our old ovens. Uh, I had a, a metal company cut, cut the ovens in half and mount them on plywood and then put them on the wall here. So when people do visit the Aurelio's Pizza here in Homewood, uh, it's our it's our photo wall where people come up, put their hand on the, the oven, you know, on the handle there, have the logo up above so they can show they were at the Aurelio's Pizza in Homewood and they're by the old oven, one of them. Well, and it's kind of it's kind of sad right now that people can't come there, touch it, put their hands on the piece of history. But just don't worry, guys. We'll get through it, and eventually we'll be back to, uh, you know, touching those ovens all day long. I did want to show this just because, and, and I did want to preface this, that this is not a current video. Um, this is something that was um, uh, videoed a while ago, but you kind of put it up for normalcy, and it's just really impressive. It's one of my favorites, but, you know, he's not wearing gloves or anything like that because this is not, that not, didn't happen recently. So right, right. He's actually not even making the dough right now. It was already made. He's just pushing the button to drop it. And um, so this is in our yeah. homewood location. The, the mixer is from the 1940s. My dad found it in an old Joliet bakery that was going out of business when we first moved into our homewood location. And being that we're more than a, a pizza place, we're like a pizza factory just about with 650 seats. We make 2,200 pounds of dough three days a week. Um, those were stainless steel troughs that you saw there. Um, so we do make a lot of dough balls and uh, a lot of pizzas. Unfortunately, we're about half where we were um, before the pandemic hit and we were, you know, closed down our dining area. But um, we're still plugging away. We're doing everything safely as we can um, on quality and, and quantity. So I just know any really as you go to, um, we're giving you the best that we can at this time. And uh, we appreciate every customer that comes and we're humbled about everybody just, you know, supporting Aurelio's over the 60 plus years. And uh, we're just glad to be here for everybody. Well, and I did want to acknowledge Michael Wolf, uh, one of U.S. Pizza team members. He's saying hi from California. Uh, oh, it's, we have to hey, do Mike. that. It's in our contract. Um, but uh, Mike Doniker <laughs> actually jumped in, too, and he's um, been a lot of help with me. He's one of the guys I interviewed early on and uh, been talking with him almost daily, uh, at least if, if not on phone through this. But he um, he says 80-20 rule. And, Mike, I know you're listening. So go ahead and um, expand on 80-20 what? Uh, normalcy versus info or vice versa. He also said, followed that up and said that um, they just launched a 50 location place this week. That was the first, and that was the first change. More real life posts than promote here and there. So um, I assume that that kind of, it was more real life posts versus the, uh, and promote here and there versus, uh, you know, some of the situation oriented videos. I, I, I don't even like using the other word, but. Uh, right. All right. And, you know, he'll, uh, I'm sure he'll ex explain a little bit more, uh, a little bit later, but uh, Mo Matt says, please deliver to Cobb Parkway. More locations, please. Um, Gail Triveline says uh, they need more radios up in Gurney, Illinois. So, I mean, there's, there's demand for it right now. So, but I, I really like um, some of the things that you've been doing. Uh, now, some of these things like uh, acts of kindness and food friends, are, are, are you making some changes now that you think you're going to, keep after everything goes back to normal you're like i kind of like how that's working it's working great um, for now but i think it could work in real time as well no i think so i think so too the act of kindness um card is something that we would definitely consider keeping going um indefinitely because i really think you know everybody um there's no better way to make someone happy food food makes everybody happy and especially pizza um and a lot of people have grown up with our product and it's the pizza that they think about um, there's other great pizza companies across the country that's their neighborhood, you know, pizza place that people go to. And you compare, you know, what you remember is growing up as your neighborhood place. And Aurelio's, thank goodness, for 60 plus years with over 40 locations now is that 
corner, a real, I mean, corner pizza place that people can compare as they travel the country. Hopefully they don't find anything better than us. But, um, so we get people that ship them and just go out of their way to come back and enjoy Rilio's. Well, it, I mean, there's nothing you can say about the, the, the place you remember. And this is all I'm, I'm seeing here. It's not, not to mention the list of places right here. So you might have a good list of people that they probably just want it, but maybe some of them want to open their own. I'm just saying, let me see, Munster, Denver, Algonquin, um, <laughs> Missouri. So, yeah, you mind this and see uh, if you got some more locations coming up. If there are super serious people out there, Kathy Reagan in Memphis, Tennessee. Hey, I'm in Oxford. I agree with you, Kathy Reagan. We need one down here, Joe. I won't buy it, but I'll get a, an investor and I'll run it. But, uh, you know, I did want to show just a couple more pictures of some of the, I mean, you've got a lot of good food stuff. And, uh, it, you know. The picture, hey, Brian, the picture, that's our spinach calabrese. Um, a lot of places would call it a calzone, but our family heritage is from Calabria. And this, mm. is, a, uh, this is something that my great-great-grandparents would make. Um, back in Italy, but it did not have the sauce in it or the cheese in it. It was just spinach and spices and, and pie dough. And they would actually serve it cold on the counter. They would make it, cool it, cut it, and just leave it on the counter, and you'd walk by and, and have a, a spinach pie. So to wow. Americanize it, Americans need cheese and sauce. So back in the early 80s, we, uh, you know, spinach was not even thought of as a topping for, for pizzas until, you know, the last 10 years or so, 15 years. So we were a little ahead of the curve by introducing our spinach calabrese, and it's actually one of our more popular pizzas that we serve here. Wow, that's I like the the whole aspect, the cold aspect. Uh, you know, kind of yeah. go through. Got some of those pine glasses. You know, you guys do a lot of uh, you know a lot of drinks as well, but some just really great cheese bowls, some really great food. All right, I'm done with the commercial, Joe. You're gonna have to pay for the next yeah. picture. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. well, is there the, anything? The last, the, hey, Brian, oh, the last picture you're showing. If you noticed, our pizzas are served on stainless steel racks. Um, what that does, my dad came up with that back in the 60s, and now we have actually you know, bought the machinery or paid for it, the tool and die to make these racks for the Rilio's pizza chain, and it lifts the pizza off the pan, which allows air to circulate under it, and it keeps the crust nice and crispy, and it doesn't get soggy because of the, the drippings from your, your toppings. So it's something my, my dad was very innovative in the, the pizza business. We also have a machine that, um, we call it the Monster. It's a, a fresh sausage pizza dispenser. And it's a stainless steel machine that holds 50 pounds of our fresh homemade Italian sausage, which we make for the entire chain. And um, you fill the machine up, you push a button, there's a blade that goes back and forth while it compresses the meat through, and it drops off fresh uh, little balls of fresh sausage onto the, the sauce dough. So it allows our pizza makers not to have to do everything by hand the machine does it a little faster the balls are the same size so you have consistency for the cooking of it also and i think it's something that really sets it really was apart when uh you know you have consistency from store to store to store our meat's fresh it's never frozen no fillers no preservatives so it's something that we're very proud of. i'll make our own sausage for for all of our own stores and uh it's always the highest quality I I saw it, and that was the one picture I was looking for last night and got pulled away and forgot to pull up, but uh, it's just like a big extruder that slices it for you. And it's uh, – with the volume you guys do, not to mention the wall of ovens you have at the home location, it's uh, pretty insane. Yeah, um, 72 so, feet of ovens. Is, was it 70 – I was guessing around – we got to have 50, 60 feet. Yeah. Um, so my cousin, Tom Grilling, hello. Tom Pimple Moose, I think. can't remember. That used to be your name on Facebook. Hey, but uh, Yeah, he's uh, – so, you know, he's Bobby Grilly's son. Um, during the dance, but uh, you know, he did Aurelio's too. Uh, Chris Alanius again asks, um, what is it? Uh, send David Portnoy. Oh, well, I don't want to say El Presidente, he's kind of a jerk sometimes, but he's not wrong. Uh, of uh, Barstool Sports, he'll, um, yeah, yeah I, you know, he's got a following. He does I the actually, one bite rule, but he usually takes more. So I sent Dave uh, a pizza on Monday. You are, or you did? I already did. Oh, nice. All right. Well, yeah, Chris, I, you I great mind mailed a out a frozen uh, medium cheese pizza and uh, wrote him a nice little note. And uh, hopefully <laughs> he's going to eat it because with the pandemic in New York having a little little hard time up that way, um, I just hope he gets there. But it was in a, you know, right. proper packaging and dry ice. And uh, so we'll see if it's up on there. 
Maybe Chris, maybe Chris works for him because that was exactly what he told you to do. But um, and also, uh, I guess Dave's opening up a new pizzeria up in New York with the help of uh, one of the greats, Nino Coniglio, uh, up there of Williamsburg Pizza. Nice. Um, Nino's, the, you know, he's got some great talent. He, he's out there helping everybody in the industry that you know is asking for his help. So um, it's nice to see Dave go from one side to the other side, and then <laughs> maybe someday he'll go there and rip his pizza apart. But yeah. Everybody's entitled to their opinion, and I like the honesty. I do. You don't have to like every single pizza. You know, it's very yeah, subjective. Yeah, I was a little nervous shipping the pizza going, no, what's he going <laughs> to say about us, you know? But I have faith in our product. Um, I think I put on the note, you got to cut it in squares, not triangles, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, and um, I was wanting to say, I think it was, uh, yeah, Gloria, what else says they always have pizza shipped for Christmas, so... Um, you, you know, you're, you're still feeding people and when they leave, they can't get you guys out of their heads. So as far as that, um, I did want, oh, that's, I wanted to talk with the, um, it was, uh, I guess it was Mike Doniker's follow-up. He says, as far as the, uh, um, Facebook posts, you know, right now you want to get personal with your posts. Like Joe was saying, people love seeing the behind the scenes, real life happenings. Biggest issues brands make is a push offers and sell on stop. Joe's picture wall is a perfect example of this. Hey, so thank you, Mike. So Appreciate that's, uh, that. yeah, he's, he's doing great. And I, you know, it's good to have affirmation that you're doing the right. Uh, so, uh, some of the shipping prices is, uh, a little high Nelson man says, but I mean, I don't know that, uh, Joe yeah. does that. We, I, we sell yeah, protos we, and uh, the shipping price is insane for anything in a pizza box shape. I know this for a fact. So, right. And if you've had our pizza before, even though it's a thin crust pizza, it's, it's a heavier pizza than your average thin crust out there. So, um, if you order, you know, two, three, four, we can ship up to eight at one time in a box. Um, the box can weigh over 50 pounds when it's done because you have to put dry <laughs> ice. You have the box in the pizzas. Um, well, maybe not 50 pounds, 40 pounds. But anyways, uh, it's overnight FedEx. And, you know, if you just ship a letter overnight, the letter could cost you $20. So you get a picture of a True. box that's, you know, two feet tall, two feet wide and weighs 40 pounds. It's going to cost some money. So, well, um, and I have no you don't make any money on the FedEx ship shipping. Yeah. I have no doubt yeah, you get the best yeah, shipping absolutely. you can, but it's, you also want the quality there. And Chris Elanius actually did uh, just follow up. Uh, he's vulgar but funny and delivers honest reviews. And that's what I do like. It's honest. And it's, uh, if I don't agree with it, that's fine. If that's what he thinks, that's good. He's right. a fan, but he doesn't work for him. But uh, he wants to. So, Dave, if you're watching, I hope you're watching. We'd love to even get you on here one time. But uh, Chris wants a job. Needs a job or wants a job? One or the other. All but, right. um, you know, I just wanted to say, is there one just final uh, – affirmation something to make people feel positive or something that final yeah, positive I mean, note yeah. that you want to give the industry and, and customers and, and stuff like that well the first thing i'd say is um don't watch the news all day long because that'll just depress the heck out of you um i i watch maybe for 20 minutes just to get a, you know what's going on from the last night um stay positive um get back to your community be kind to each other and um, support your local businesses, no matter what business it is, because um, really the, the restaurants are life and blood for, for jobs, for just the culture and what people bring to your neighborhood. And um, so there's small guys and there's big guys, um, but we're all in this together and we all need to survive. And I think in another hopefully 30 days, we'll, we'll kind of look back at this and go, it was horrible. We got through it, but you know what? We made it. And uh, all because of our customer base and everybody sticking together and doing nice things so i think that's my message it, it is and it was a it was a great time up there you guys it was like uh, interviewing family it really was so yeah i know you make every single customer kind of feel like their family hence the the wall of babies um so i'm trying to get yes, back sir. to the two things there we go my uh, mouse was freezing up a little bit but joe thank you so much for your time today guys uh, all, and everybody for all the um the uh, uh the comments um, yeah, see, I see Chris is down there. He says he's furloughed, but uh, he's at the mid end of May. He's hoping to return to normalcy. Everybody, that's the, a good thing right there. Stay positive, stay optimistic. It's going to end, and we're going to get to that place. But uh, in the meantime, just, you know, love your neighbors, support local, you know, even support chains because they still have employees that they're trying to feed. Um, they don't need as much help as the independents, but their employees might. So yep. I'm not pushing yep, one way or the other. Thank you, but Brian. Joe, thanks again for so much of your time. And uh, it was a great uh, audience. Uh, 
one of the best ones we've done so far. So appreciate it. And we'll see you guys next time on the next PMQ Live update. I'm going to be talking with RC Gallegos tomorrow, U.S. Pizza Team member of RC's uh, NYC Pizza and Pasta in the Woodlands, Texas, kind of the Houston area. So he's going to be talking about uh, how everybody's having to incorporate third parties, but uh, what you need to do to make stay safe while using third parties and things like that, maybe some of the pitfalls that come along with it. So tune in for that, 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, Sunday, I'm taking off. It's Easter. I've been doing one of these every day since the 25th. And I'm not sad about it, but I need a break. My head's going to explode. But uh, Monday, we're coming back. It's going to be 3 p.m. Central Standard Time with Chef Donatella Arpaia of Prova Pizza Bar in New York. Um, and it's going to be uh, you know, just with the time zone we have to get in there. But she's going to talk about, you know, what it's like getting in one of the epicenters. So didn't want you guys to tune in for that. And we'll have, you know, hopefully have one every day and, and eventually start taking weekends off. So everybody stay safe, stay sane, and, you know, eat some pizza. Thank yeah. you, Joe. Hey. Hey, thank you, Brian, and thanks to all the medical staff and our first responders. We love you guys. I do want to say something, though. You got something kind of coming up here shortly. I can't say what it is, but um, do you want you want to kind of yeah, tell people I can to give keep a little an eye teaser. out for something? Um, there's something coming up between now and May 15th that uh, we're going to have a, a celebrity lineup, and it's going to be for Rilio's Pizza, where you can tune in on, uh, on Facebook like this. And uh, you'll be entertained while you're sitting at home, hopefully enjoying some Aurelio's pizza. So we will be advertising it through our Facebook page and through the media. And uh, we're putting it together as we speak. And I think you'll find it pretty interesting and fun. So hopefully uh, we'll see you then. Thank you. All right. Stay tuned to Aurelio's pizza for all the fun in the pizza world. You guys have Thank a great day. Stay safe. Bye. All right. Stay well. Stay safe.